Well now, this is the 3rd of January 2022 and I speak to you on behalf of Narbert Baptist Church. I find it a, a great honour and an opportunity to speak to you. Thank you for listening. A new year. Well, the fact of the matter is that we are all getting older. The turning of the year is evidence of it, isn't it? For me, this is particularly evident. I am now well into my 88th year. And I want to speak as an old man and ask you to observe as I've discovered that all, all old people are apprentices at being old. They've never been old before. They're working at it without any previous experience. Of course, that's been true at every stage in life. And um, if we made a bit of a fist of being young, I think we make a bit of a fist of being old. We are all, all of us old people, we are all of us in the junior section of the senior citizens. But I think that there is one aspect to old age that is worthy of mention. The value of being old is recollection, assimilation, analysis of time. I think that's the supreme advantage of old age. And as I recollect and assimilate and analyse the years of my life, I realise that the supreme supreme feature of human nature is subjectivity, that is, an inner consciousness of self. Brute beasts live upon the impulse of instinct. But human beings live within the developing realization of their individuality. And as I recollect and assimilate and analyze my experience of time as a human being, I realize that there is one crucial fulcrum of fact upon which all my thinking is based. It's this. 
subjectivity inward consideration for me is based in my entire consciousness of myself as an individual upon faith in Jesus Christ as my Saviour, my Lord. And speaking as an old man, I think that there is the glory and the terror of increasing age. If we have no faith, then we are inexorably facing the fact that we are leaving everything that ever we knew upon the incontrovertible fact that here have we no continuing city. Uh, but if we have faith, then our consideration is the adventure of the journey to a better land, a better land than ever we have known here. If we have no faith, then increasing age confronts us with the finality of farewell. But with faith, I realise that one after another, the cables are being loosened from the key and the ship as it were, is being made ready for the journey home. If we have no faith, then we are preoccupied with things that we can't keep. But with faith, we are preoccupied with that which we can never lose. Without faith, what disappointment. I think even despair that has somehow to be distracted by all sorts of trivialities. But with faith there is inward invigoration. I speak from experience. Without faith there's absolute blankness, a futility and meaninglessness. But with faith we receive truths that have the divine coat of arms on the letterhead, as it were, and one's name on the address. Without faith we are the receivers of the angry arguments of unbelievers and secularists flaunting 
their closed up negative little logicalities as if they were diamonds when to me they're no more impressive than rabbit droppings but with faith we hear God saying I give to you my exceeding great and precious promises I mean that's what I mean by subjectivity this inward consciousness of self but the supreme glory of this supreme feature of human nature is the supreme experience of reconciliation to God leading to communion with God that is the raison d'etre of our existence thou hast made us for thyself and it's with this exhilaration that I face what I am experiencing ever increasing age here are realities which have the throb of something in them which is in and of itself beyond all that I am adequate to conceive of. Here are thoughts which come to me as I dwell upon the Holy Word of God, the Scriptures. Here are thoughts which are not traceable to any of my previous studies. They're not formed from the archives of my memory. They're contrary to the disposition of my personality. They are unlike the tenor of the disciplines of meditation which I have practiced for a lifetime. Here are thoughts that are radiant with the very presence of God. That God with whom in Christ my Saviour I am reconciled. Of course we are accused of being sentimentalist and escapist in all this religious talk but that's a charge I absolutely refute and for this reason that as I dwell deep in the revelation of the mind of God in Scripture I find that my thinking moves from the effects of things to the cause of things. It is, as it were, diagnostic 
contemplation. It moves from, as it were, the outer office of effects and moves right in to the cause of those effects. Of course, much scientific thinking is of that quality, except that scientific thinking will reach back to the cause of functions, how things work, but the thinking of one who receives Christ as Saviour and Lord reaches back not to the function of things but to the purpose of things. I am quite convinced that one of the supreme needs in our society is for those who will think theologically and spiritually reaching back to the cause and purpose of our life. It's a huge need. I cannot overemphasize the gravity and the glory and the splendor and the relevance of this manner of thinking. Being reconciled with God. I find that there are revelations granted within the scripture, I mean. Revelations within the text of the holy inspired word of God which are of a magnitude which proves infallibly to be from God and not from us. Here is the voice of God from beyond space, however vast, from beyond time, however long, the word of God that pierces through until I become aware of it and my whole cognitive power is illuminated by it. That through all my frailties and weaknesses and inconsistencies and vacillations and all the burdensome baggage I carry because of my fallen human nature. Here is the voice of God saying, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Here is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. For over 50 years, Rosemary and I have been making our, our journey, getting the ferry from Stranra or Cairn Ryan to make our way back to Rosemary's home in County Antrim in the beautiful country of Ireland and times beyond number 
time's no number. We've looked through the window of the ferry or gone out on deck and looked. And there, far ahead, through the mist, all obscure and undefined, is some outline of the land to which we are going. It's not hallucination. We're not imagining it. We can't define anything clearly, but it isn't something we've thought up. It's home. That's what it is. It's home. And the older we get, well, you're probably a bright young thing. The older I get. As a matter of fact, the mist seems piece by piece to drift away and I begin to see more clearly the wonder of what it is to enter immediately into the presence of that God with whom I am reconciled, with whom I have communion, whom with my whole heart I love. Amid the Amid the shades of evening, we sometimes sing. While sinks life's lingering sand, I hail the glory dawning in Emmanuel's land. Who you say? That's pretty gloomy. No, it isn't. It is the glory of our human life reaching its absolute fulfillment. Well, there you are. I'm all agog with it. Have a glorious new year. God bless you. Good night. <laughs>